welcome to the shop. I always look forward to your visit. Get yourself something to drink and let's get started. Hey guys, we got a fun project to do today. Let's bring you down here on the bench and get to it. And here is our next project. Check this out. It's a chisel, but it's called a bent chisel. All because of that right there. You can see pretty well the maker's mark there. It's a buck chisel. I have experience with bucks. I have this one here, which is a gouge. You can see it's Buck Brothers. And it's a gouge. This is one I restored before I started making videos. I turned this handle, and this is a piece of plumbing here that I put on for the brass, drilled a hole in it, and put it together. So that is one of my tools. It works really nice. And I don't know if you would recognize it, but this is a Buck Brothers cast steel. And this is the chisel I have used to do a lot of the trimming on the eye after I get a handle in. And so you would have probably seen that one on some videos as well. But what I want to do is take this one and clean it up and restore it. The handle has a lot of grease it seems like in it, so I'm hoping to be able to clean that out. And this here is not rusty, but I think whoever I bought it from bead blasted it, sandblasted it, and I would just want to clean it up. What's nice is this steel here feels so nice and smooth. This one here feels really, really rough. So I'm hoping to get it to look nice and cleaned up and we'll give it a sharpening and we have a project we want to do with it. Somebody in one of my previous videos asked about this small wheel on my angle grinder. It's not a small wheel necessarily, it's a cup. A wire cup, and the wires are twisted together. They're thick and stiff, but they're softer than the other metal, so it almost polishes. So we're going to use that today. Alright, we're going to 
make sure we can have this the back side here the underside tuned up we want this all to be nice and smooth all the way around this outside edge here and especially along the front edge so we need to make sure that's all nice and smooth we'll work on the stone on it later um, it is best to have gloves on but i do this without gloves because i want to make sure and protect the steel if it gets too hot to touch then i'll know that the steel is getting too hot i also have some water over here so that i'm able to dip the end of it here and keep it nice and cooled so we'll work on the back side once we get the back side tuned we'll turn it and set it up here Let's see if we can get that edge hair popping sharp you can see there those sanding marks go almost to the edge there's a few little pits right there and I'm afraid that somebody has taken and ground that rounded so I'd like to clean up this front side here the top and get it the way I want it and then we'll look at how that is showing up in fact I might just take and make this a right angle and bring that back to these to these um, sanding marks and then we'll go from there you can see there's sanding marks all along here so it should lay flat on the piece that you're working on when the time comes i know some people will take these and put them on plate glass put sanding paper on plate glass and then work these until there's just there's a perfect shine the whole way i'm not going to go to that extent i just want it to be nice across the front here and then just have sanding marks every so often because when I'm doing woodwork, that way it will be flat enough for me to do the work that I need to do with it. So let's do this top. Again, with your fingers down close so that it doesn't overheat and having your water ready at a moment's notice. I want to show you something here a little trick about keeping your steel good is when you put it in the water and it comes back out you want that little bead of water sitting across the front there that is surface tension water has surface tension and it will hold right there and while you're using it you put your finger here and put it on the sander that may start to bubble, but as long as there's water, it will not burn, as long as you're not pushing too hard, too fast. Plus, if you can't, if it starts to burn you, then get it off of there, and you dip it again, get that little bubble of surface tension there, and you can go back to sanding again. It should work on both sides. You can see how you keep the water here on the edge. You tip it too much, it'll drip off. But um, this one here now, you'll notice, goes all the way, the grain marks, the sanding marks go all the way to that edge. And we have a burr all the way across there. So now we're ready to go take it to the stone. It's ready to be used. This edge is close to what I want. I've got 2,000 grit and 6,000 grit, and this is a Japanese stone, and I'm just gonna skip straight to the 6,000 grit. So the first thing we wanna do is just to get a nice buff on this front edge. I don't know if you can see it in the video. The water is getting dirty right in there, and that is metal coming off of the chisel.
right. If you can see that polish that's coming out there on that edge. All right, very nice. So now what I wanna do, let's get a little more water on here. Now we're gonna work this top edge. You wanna set that on here and then lean it forward until the water pushes out the front. You will also feel it hit, but you can see that water push out the front. As soon as you get it there, keep your finger there close. You get that flat spot, just a little pressure on the very front edge and push it. Right there, you feel, I can feel right there the flat spot. I, I can feel a burr all the way across this. Just a very small, faint burr. So that is a good thing. I think that is going to be sharp. Let's check it out. All right, the final step on sharpening this. I have this strop that I made some time ago. Yeah, it's just a piece of leather strapped to this board or glued to the board. And then this piece is mounted in there. And that is to fit flush there and then you tighten it into your wood vise and it should stay put. And then you can take and put pressure on this and you can polish off that little burr that is under there. Then you turn it over and we'll put pressure on that edge. You don't want to dig in too much into the leather. You just want to put pressure on that edge. And I'm putting quite a bit of pressure, probably 10 pounds of pressure, 5 pounds of pressure on with my left hand. And that gives you a nice, beautiful little polish on both sides. So let's see. Man, it feels nice. Now let's see how this thing cuts. Good to me. One of you, my viewers, on one of the other previous videos I've done recently, uh, I think it was the knife when I was making the bandsaw knife, showed me or pointed out that my vise was shaking all over the place. And so I thought we would make a new base. My dad mounted this vise just as a quick a quick setup to put on a frame here so that this could be this could be gripped into the wood vise and be held it's a little champion vise a number three and i've always wanted to change it he put this little cleat down here on the bottom to make clearance for these bolts and it just never has worked right i've always wanted to move this back so that this sticks out further I'd like for nothing to be underneath this part of the jaw. So I'd like to have that forward and I'd like to move this back and get this all set up so that you can clamp it in the, the, um, the lumber, the goodness, what am I saying? The wood vise and be able to even over here, clamp it if you wanted to to the bench. So let's get this fixed up and let's use our recently fixed up chisel here. All right, so I'm gonna want this piece to fit right there in the center. Let's 
see how this works. That should work a whole lot better. It's always nice to have the right tools for the job. Here's our beautiful little chisel, all finished up, cleaned up, taking the rust out. A nice, good edge on there. So it will be very useful. You can see how the wood handle may have changed a little bit. I had, there was a big gouge out here on the bottom side, so I sanded some of that out. But then we put it in the linseed oil and it all darkened up nice. We were able to get this steel thing, the steel shroud put back, get shined up and get a little rust off. 
So now we have the family started. Got the chisel, the bent chisel, a regular chisel, and the gouge. I can't explain how nice that steel feels. It's not polished, but it just comes out so nice. Even this, you can see all of that patina in there. You can see all of the character marks, yet it just feels so nice. Once again, guys, this was a fun little project. Thank you for sharing it with me. I always enjoy your visits. So we'll keep this probably, I don't know if I'll have a place on the wall for it or not. I think I might just keep it to use along with these others here. I have been using this one quite a bit, um, like I said at the beginning of the video, to trim up the eye of the axes. In fact, I'm pretty sure I did this one where I just trimmed those sharp edges off around the edges. And so I might just keep this to use, but um, it has been good to put that together to get a good solid base for the vise and be able to use this tool and demonstrate it a little bit. So it has been fun being with you. Thanks once again. Hope to see you on the next video. Give us a thumbs up if this was entertaining. And if you know anybody that likes this content, as always, pass this link on to those who you think might enjoy this. And if you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. It helps the channel and we're able to continue to put out this kind of content. I thoroughly do enjoy it and I hope you do too. Thanks so much again. Have a great day. God bless. Thank you.